Hi guys, okay, so um, this is something I've been thinking about um, quite a lot in the last couple of years. So for those of you who don't know, um, I run a big event called Fight Camp once a year. I'm wearing a t-shirt at the moment. Um, and uh, we have a number of tournaments there. But in addition to running tournaments myself, um, and also being involved with judging tournaments at other big events, I also, uh, unlike all, all instructors necessarily, I take part in tournaments as well. And I think it's important um, for people who are at the sort of front end of interpreting um, old uh, traditions of fighting and trying to bring them back to life to um, put themselves on the line and take part in these uh, kind of competitions and stuff. Not saying that competitions are everything, because they are just competitions, um, but I think that you do get things from this type of competitive environment, uh, both judging it and taking part in it, I should hasten to add, um, that you don't really get in a sparring environment just in your own club. But anyway, that's a tangent. Um, taking part in tournaments and judging tournaments and organising rules for tournaments and so on, something that bothers me slightly, is that, in fact bothers me quite a lot, is that thrusting is not getting as much uh, uh, notice and reward as it should be. Okay, So we know that in a real situation with sharp swords, a, a cut has to be performed in um, a specific set of ways to wound the opponent. Okay, Thrusts in general are, if they make contact with the opponent, much more likely to produce a grievous wound. Now I'm not, um, I'm not someone who's uh, much more pro thrust over cut, in fact I'm equal, I like there to be a balance of cuts and thrusts, but what you see in a lot of tournament fighting is a lot of bash, 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 hit, hit, hit. Okay, um, And there are two things that bother me about that. Firstly, that a lot of those hits wouldn't cut because they're not performed in the way that makes a good cut. Uh, but putting that issue to one side, because I'll talk more about cuts in a different video, the other point is there's lots of hits and not enough thrusts. If we look at the period manuals and treatises, what we see are uh, what we see happening are um, a lot of thrusts and thrusts being very, very important, and often the thrust being a finishing blow. The problem in uh, one of the problems in tournaments is that thrusts, when they do land, are not getting noticed not getting noticed necessarily by the fighters themselves, might be the person giving the thrust or the person receiving the thrust, but also not getting necessarily noticed by the judges. And having had a lot of um, time judging tournaments, one of the problems, one of the reasons why it's very difficult to notice the thrusts growing, going in, is that they have a very little percussive, um, very little sound to them. So when someone gets hit with a, with a a cut, let's call it, even though it might, even if it's with the flat, it makes a loud sound usually on a piece of equipment, whether it's on a mask or an arm guard or a glove or whatever. Um, however, thrusts are usually much, much quieter. So that's the first thing, you don't hear them. And, and hearing when you're judging is a very uh, important tool. So that's a problem first, you don't hear them. The second problem is with HEMA style blades, unlike with modern sport weapons such as foil and epee, um, they tend to be stiffer. So often a thrust can hit quite hard, sometimes hard enough to actually bruise you or, or knock your mask back, but the blade doesn't really visibly um, flex. Okay, um, So that's another issue. And the third issue is that quite simply, thrusts, because of their darting in and out nature, are harder to spot. If I thrust someone in the hand when we're fighting, that's far, far harder for anybody to see, myself included, and the person I'm hitting, um, and the judges, uh, than a cut is. A cut, is, because it overlays the target, is generally speaking easier to see. Um, so I start to think about what are possible solutions for this. Certainly one of the main um, solutions is for people to be better trained to recognise the thrusts. Okay, uh, Because if you get used to seeing what a successful thrust looks like, then as a judge you should be better at spotting them when they land. Um, but I think another issue is to do slightly with our equipment. So blunt points, whether you have a rolled, a rolled tip like the feathers and like the Eastern Sabres do, or whether you have a, a, a big blunt tip like some of the rapiers do, or a small blunt tip like the small swords, um, one of the problems is that most of them are quite smooth on the end. And I have seen thrusts, and I've had thrusts land on me, 
that have uh, not been called because although the thrust has landed, it has immediately slid off the target. And if you think about a sharp point, even if a sharp point contacted with, say, your shoulder or your forearm, because it's sharp, it bites at that moment. It bites and it penetrates. But a point like this, a blunt, smooth point, slides off. So I think very often people think that a thrust has missed when actually a thrust with a sharp has, uh, would have penetrated. And what's happening is the point is going in uh, for a split second and then sliding off the target, when with a sharp point it would have gone in. So one of the solutions they had for this in the Victorian and Edwardian periods was uh, called, your, please excuse my pronunciation, but I think a, a point d'arrêt uh, in French, a, a point d'arrêt, in other words, a, a stop point. And they had little uh, spiky bits, uh, a bit like a jousting coronel, that essentially stick on the fabric uh, of the person's fencing jacket. So at the moment of contact, much like a sharp point, in fact they are a sharp point, they essentially stick in the fabric and the blade flexes, so the, the thrust bites in. And I have been starting to wonder if this is what we need in HEMA, and I'm not making uh, any great um, statements in this video, but I think it's something that's worth thinking about. Thrusts are not getting noted enough in our tournament fighting and in our casual sparring. Cuts are getting rewarded perhaps too much, thrusts are not getting rewarded enough. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe we need to talk more widely about ways of getting around that. And I think there's, a, there's an issue about the training, there's an issue about the judging, uh, and there's an issue about the actual equipment we're using as well. So, something to think about. Thank you.